Hey everybody, and welcome to my second of three videos about the Nikon F, the original system SLR, the original SLR. One really heavy, heavy slag of metal around your neck, and it's great. So we're going to, the first video we overviewed it, the second, this video, we're going to show you how to do things with your camera. If there's a specific thing you want to do, check out the index below and you can get a link directly to that part of the video. To start with, we're going to mount and unmount lenses. So you'll see I don't have a prism on here. That's because we're going to do a separate video about the prism and it's kind of hard to see what's going on with the camera when the light meter prism is in place. So to mount a lens, here's the index dot right here. That little black dot. What you're going to do is line up the black dot above your aperture with that black dot on the index dot and lock it in place. And when you hear it click, it's in place and you're set to go. If you have the metering prism on your camera, check out the third video. There's a slightly different twist on mounting the lens and we'll show, cover that in the third video. If you just have the standard or the waist level or one of the other prisms that doesn't have the meter coupling, then that's how you do it. You just line up black dot to black dot and twist. To unmount the lens, you push the lens release button right here and turn it clockwise. And your lens is unmounted. To load film, you first have to open the camera back. So you unlock this, rotate it to open, and there's, there's some arrows to guide that. Remove the camera back, careful not to drop it. If you're walking around, don't, don't lose it either. Obviously, I don't think you would lose it, but don't drop it, because if you bend it, you're going to end up with light leaks, and that's a mess. Now, unlike most cameras, the film rewind knob does not pop up on this because you take the camera back off pull out your leader and this is one of the smoothest loading cameras I've ever used. Activate the shutter and if you've seen my other videos then you know that normally it takes me about four tries to get the film loaded. There we go, first try done. That's a rarity for me. Here we are looking at the cameras back with the film loaded and here's what happens now at this point if you were doing this in real life, you put the cameras back back onto the camera so that you keep your film expo uh, in the dark. If your camera, if your film gets in the light, it's ruined. So all of this has been in the light, it's ruined. Uh, so when you take a picture, you need to put the you make sure that your film remains in the dark from when you load it through when you take the picture, from when you completely wind the film back into the cassette to when you take it to be developed. So to take a picture, you push this, you line up your image, you take your meter reading if you have it, um, you compose it, you set your aperture and shutter speed, and you take your picture by pushing the shutter release. Then you advance the film, and you can see that as you take the pictures, the film advances. Now, if you, when, it, when you finish all of your fr frames, you take in your 24 or your 36 images, you rotate the dial up here on the top from A for advance to R for rewind. That activates the shutter for some reason. It doesn't open the shutter curtain that I know of. And then you just rewind. But let's find out right now whether or not that opens the shutter curtain. So let's go to rewind. It activates the shutter, but it does not open uh, a gap so that light can come through. So, flash use. A lot of people like to know how to use the flash on this. There are two ways. One is by getting the adapter that converts the proprietary flash to a standard flash hot shoe. Or you can get a Nikon flash that has that. Uh, the problem is those, I think, were all bulb flashes and you're not going to be able to find bulbs readily anymore. The other thing you can do is use the PC port right here, which is a standard PC port and will power an electronic flash, a modern flash that you can pick up in the store today. Just fine. So those are your flash options. Now, 
The flash operates at 1 60th of a second and slower for modern X flashes. For bulb flashes, there are, some of the bulb flashes could operate up to a thousandth of a second, but again, it's not gonna be very easy to, to get those. So, to use a flash, the first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you are set to FX. There are other flash settings. X is the flash sync speed for electronic flashes, which is FX. The next one is, so FX. FX syncs X speed, X flashes at 1 60th and slower. It also syncs F flashes at 1 30th and slower. So white F, white numbers, that's the proper sync. Red X, red number, 60th and faster, that's the proper sync. Lift up on the, the, the ring and rotate it and you can select dot F. Uh, dot F is for M flashes synced and that syncs at 1 30th of a second and slower and F flashes that sync at 1 60th of a second. Again, red F, red 60th, white dot, white numbers. The next one is red dot. This is for FP and some M flashes that sync at 1 60th of a second. And again, 60th is in red and slower. Lift up again, and we go to green dot. And the green dot, or yellow, on some of the Nikon bodies, this might be a yellow dot and yellow numbers. This is for FP flashes synced at 1 125th to 1 1,000th of a second, and F bulbs that sync from 1 125th to 1 500th, and some M bulbs that sync at 1 1 25th. And that's it. it. For all intents and purposes, you want to just leave it at FX, because that's what's going to power a modern flash. Uh, unless you're really intent in using old timey flash bulbs. The fl this camera has X, F, P, F, and M flash sinks, but just for, like I said right now, leave it at, at FX and use a modern electronic flash. So one of the Nikon F's special features are the interchangeable focusing screens. And it also had interchangeable prisms and inter some of the, there were some interchangeable backs as well. But right now let's just take a look at the interchangeable focusing screen. And to remove the interchangeable focusing screen, you need to access it from below. I'm just using a 120 spool. There's actually a tool that's designed for this. It comes with, they're supposed to come with the focusing screens. Then you just push up on it. There we go. Getting there. No, we're not. I'm gonna rotate it upside down and tap it gently. And you can see that the focusing screen comes out. One thing to bear in mind is not to use a metal screwdriver or anything that could scratch the focusing screen because you'll have a big scratch in your focusing screen. To put it back in now, got Nikon F, it says on the back, let's see if we can get that in focus, Nikon F on one side and a red letter E on the front. The, the letter E on the front designates the type of focusing screen. This is an E focusing screen, which is the grid view. So it drops in. On the left side here are two clips. And so we're going to put it in this way and let it fall into place. Again, I'm going to tamp, tamp it down. I'm not, I strongly recommend not using your fingers. If you reach in from the mirror box with your finger, you could touch the mirror with your finger and damage it. If you push down on it here, you're going to risk getting fingerprints on your focusing screen, and that's that's not good either. It's just going to end up with a blurry image when you try to focus. So that's how you change the focusing screen. Prisms are uh, prisms just snap on. Here's the button to re re add and remove them, and you just put it on. To release it, you push the button and lift it off. 
and they have slightly different quirks about mounting. Some of them mount behind the Nikon plate, and some of them, like the metering prisms, mount covering the Nikon plate. Let's talk a little bit about how to use MLU. So the first thing you want to do is locate the MLU dial, which is right here. And you're going to rotate the dial backward toward the body, or if you're holding it and looking at it like this, counter or anti-clockwise. So let's do that. There we go, now it's ready for MLU. Then you push the shutter button. This creates a blank frame and locks up the mirror. So yes, you sacrifice a frame to do that, but you now have a locked up mirror. And like I said in the first video, it's kind of a wonky early system and hadn't probably worked out some of the mechanics behind the more refined MLU systems that followed this. But there's an advantage to this by creating a blank frame. Now you know which image you used MLU on. So if you are looking for something specific, a family portrait or a macro photo or some astrophotography or any of the myriad other things you can use MLU for, now you know because you just have to look at your negative strip for a blank frame. So after you're, being, after you're finished with MLU shooting, you rotate the knob back to its original position prior to advancing the film. Okay, so you're going to do your MLU shot. You have it set up for a timed exposure. You push the button and then you leave it there. And when you're done with your timed exposure, you just advance the film and that closes the curtain behind it. Time exposure is for things which require extremely long duration exposures. Things like minutes, multiple, dozens, half an hour, hours, three, four, five, six hours. Because when you close the curtain, you do it like that, and it's going to be a slow close, which means if you're using time for something that has a two second exposure, let's say, you are going to have a meaningfully different exposure time on one side of the image than on the other and it will be noticeable in your final image. So rule of thumb, I didn't see this anywhere, just my, my gut feeling about using time is that if it's 30 seconds, maybe even 15 seconds you could get away with it, or longer, use time. If it's less than that, use bulb, and here's why. Let's do a bulb exposure. You can see, bulb goes as long as I hold my finger down or the shutter releases would, would be the case in this for something that's long. And then when I'm done, it closes much more quickly than the time exposure closes. So MLU works for other sh shutter speeds as well. Let's say that you want to take a family portrait and you don't want the mirror slap to introduce any camera vibration. You want to have a nice, very crisp family portrait. So you set it at whatever shutter speed you need to set it to and take your picture. There you go. Now, when you're finished with MLU shooting, so you've taken your family portrait or your macro shot or your star trails or whatever, prior to advancing the film, you rotate the MLU back to the off position and then advance your film. If you forget to do that, then you're going to create a blank frame afterwards as well, which is fine, it's not the end of the world, but with MLU on this, you have to waste one frame. It, it's a shame to have to waste two. So when I do videos on cameras, oftentimes I'll get questions from people. How, how do I tell how old my camera was? This camera had a production run of five years. It was mine from the first year or the last year. And with a lot of cameras, it's, it's hard to find. Um, a lot of manufacturers don't release that information, but with some cameras that have a strong following, it becomes possible to find that. So here's how, there's a link down below. It's the uh, destouts, destouts.ch link in the, in the description. And that will give you a complete list of Nikon F bodies by month, year and month, based on your serial number, and it goes from 1959 to 1973. So I can tell you right now, my camera's serial number starts with 680. You can see there. 
680. So cameras beginning with 680 are from April 1967. And there is some amount of sequence to it. When you check out the link, you'll be able to see the full detail. So if you're, you're interested in finding out the month and year of your camera's production, strongly recommend checking out that link. So the third video is going to talk about how to use the Photomic FTN prism. A couple things I'm going to talk about with prisms in this video. Uh, there were multiple ones. There was the standard prism, which just fit over the top and uh, was just for general shooting, had no light meter in it. There was the waist level prism, which opened up and allowed you to look directly down onto the camera. And it was good for macro, reprographic, astrophotography, and other specialized uses. I actually think it's also really good for street photography. You can make it look like you're futzing around with your camera as you take somebody's picture without them knowing it if you're into the whole uh, trying to get candid photos of people on the street. There's the sports finder which was designed for people who were wearing goggles, helmets, or glasses at the time because you could hold it further away from your eye and it's this huge hulking square that goes on top of your camera. You could hold it, the camera away from your eye and still see the whole frame. There's also the clip-on meter which is not actually its own finder but it clips onto the standard prism and it's an external meter, it's not a through the lens meter that just meters the scene and gives you guidance on how to take the picture. The photomic was the first metering prism, but it was not a through the lens prism. It was basically a standard prism combined with the meter clip, uh, the clip on meter. The photomic T was the first TTL prism. The photomic TN was an even was an improved TTL prism, and the photomic FTN, which this one is, was an even more improved TTL prism. And basically, it had to do with meter accuracy and some some functions. The, the The third video will talk about some of the differences between the FTN and the TN. So with that. Uh, I'll leave you if you have the, 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 this prism to check out the third video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about responding fairly quickly. If you'd like to subscribe to find out when I have more videos, and if I get more prisms, there will be more videos about the Nikon F. You can, uh, you can subscribe and I'll be more than happy uh, you'll find out when those videos come out. I also am going to be doing some videos on different film techniques and digital photography. If you have any ideas for videos, please let me know. And if I have the equipment and knowledge, I'm more than happy to make those for you. If this video was helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track. One last thing. Thank you guys for watching. Hey, everyone. Welcome to my second of three videos about the Nikon F, the original SLR, the original system SLR. Really, gas weed whips, really. <sighs> so you're going to do your, your MLU shot and going to set it up for, for a timed exposure. That didn't really work.